One. All right. We went ahead and took um, all of the scenarios starting on page six, seven, and eight and taped down a graph onto everything. So um, we're going to hear now what the class figured out. But different groups had different graphs. I can't wait to hit the slopes. Did you find one? Oh, that's you guys. Uh, we chose graph G. Graph G, can you explain? Because in the um, problem it says the slope start the lift started off and it stopped for ten minutes and so it would stop at a flat rate and then kept going and accelerating. Nice work. Everybody glue down glue down graph G. <laughs> Maybe we need to read the thingy again. Okay, in this one, it's about a ski lift going up. And it goes up to a certain level, stops for a little bit, and then goes up some more. We have time. Labeling the axes time in minutes along the bottom. And height in feet along the side. So going up, going up, going up, stop. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Time goes on while you're waiting, but you're not getting any higher. Oh, now we go up some more to the next level of the slope. All right, good job. Uh, ski lift. It's magic. Theirs was hard and complicated by the fact that we interpreted it a different way. So I gave them a hint. First of all, could somebody read your It's Magic? I'll read it. Thank you, Kenya. Aloysius. Aloysius is practicing on, on one of his tricks. As part of this trick, he cuts a rope into many pieces and then magically puts the pieces of rope back together. He begins his trick with a clinical rope and then cuts it in half. He then takes one of the halves and tries cutting it. He repeats this process until he is left with small, it's so small he can no longer cut it. He wants to know how many cuts he can make and the length of each remaining piece of rope after that. So there, uh, Mr. Bernal, you did think he was putting that rope back together, uh, but I, I think that what they're asking us for instead of number of pieces is length of each piece. So we had interpreted one way before. So what graph works well with lengths of each piece? B. B. Find B, guys. D. Find D. <laughs> so this is kind of like the interest rate when we looked at before. The interest was doubling as you went. This is something get cut in half each step of the way. So the length of the rope here is long, and then it gradually goes down. But pretty soon, smaller pieces, you're cutting them in half. There really aren't that big of a difference in size. So glue down graph D. We have cuts and okay. Uh, each they're counted each one and the length. What should we measure the length in? He didn't give us units. Oh, it, wait, wait a minute. It gave us something. 
It gave us, it was a 20 foot rope. We could measure it in feet. Baton twirling. One person from your table read the scenario, please. Jill is the major for the Altadena High School Marching Band. She has been practicing for the band's halftime performance. For the finale, Jill tosses her baton in the air so that they reach the maximum height of 22 feet. This gives her two seconds to twirl around twice and catch the baton in the halftime. Okay, so what graph do you think represents this scenario? All right, so uh, find graph F, folks. Go ahead and glue it on down. Again, quite a few of these are so open-ended, you can look at them in kind of different ways. If we're looking at them at like this, what does that curve represent? The time she has to twirl, or what else could it represent? How high it went. How high it went. I'm looking at this graph, and I teach physics, and I know this is <laughs> the way gravity works. All right, so let's think about this. Let's call this time in seconds. And this is going to be height in feet. So again, uh, if you were doing something where you didn't have a graph, uh, the way we did it, we had a little sentence down below explaining what's happening here is when you throw something up, the minute it leaves your hand, it's going fast. But as it gets higher and higher and higher, what happens? Slows down. Slows down, stops, and now it's getting lower and lower and lower. And what's happening as it gets lower? Accelerate. Speeding up. So that's why you have this parabola uh, of a curve. Music club. Somebody to read. Okay, what graph do you think fits? A. a. Can you explain why you picked A? Uh, could he spends a, a dollar in each song, so if you one song, a dollar, two songs, two dollars. Okay, so it's a constant rate. More songs, more money. All right, so glue down A. Ernesto, what am I going to write along the bottom of the graph? Money. And again, this one can be looked at two ways. You, you can make a case for putting things the other way, but uh, this works this way as well. So money and then songs. Each. Okay, so this says if you have zero dollars, how many songs can you buy? If you have ten dollars, how many songs can you buy? Okay, so this was looked at more from what could I buy if money's down here. Uh, if you flip it, it'd be like one song costs this much, two songs cost that much. You could look at it either way. Flip the page! Uh, what group? Back table. Somebody going to read for us? On Monday morning, Myra began her 1.3 mile walk to school. After a few minutes of walking, she walked right into the side of the 
and Myra hates spiders. She began running until she ran into her friend Misha. She stopped and told Misha of her adventure until she ran into her friend Misha. She stopped and told Misha of her adventure. Morning and night, Katie spider web. Then they walked the rest of the way. Okay, what graph? E, find graph E, glue it down. And while you have that glue in your hand, that also means you can glue what? C, C down for Jelly Bean Challenge. Now, we don't have anything written on Jelly Bean Challenge because I had trouble thinking about that, Jelly Beans. I did look it up, and I can hopefully explain it a little better now. <laughs> Okay, Myra, why did you pick this graph? Um, because at first she was walking to school, then she stopped because of the spider web, and then she started running, and then she started walking. Okay, so we have time in minutes, and we have distance she has walked in miles. She was walking and she was making steady pace, making that steady distance, getting to school. And then all of a sudden she hits a spider web. And then I think she stops with a friend. And then they both start walking again. So there, the, her speed was not steady. Uh, there were some little bumps in the road. Jelly bean challenge. Uh. Mr. Wright judged the annual Jelly Bean Challenge at the Summer Fair. Each year, he encourages the citizens in this town to guess the number of jelly beans in a jar. He keeps a record of everyone's guesses and the number of jelly beans that each person's guess was off by. All right. Uh, what should we put on these axes, guys? Uh, for the dependent quality, it's going to be the number of guesses. Number of guesses. or number of the guests, and independent quantity. How far off? Okay, so what this means is there was a guess that's exactly right. This guess right here is not off, okay? But there are some guesses that are too much, and some guesses that are too little. And since he's been doing it for a lot of years, he now has uh, about the same many that are too far off a lot in the too many and too far off in too few. All right, don't, don't hurt your brain on this jelly bean one. This one's hard. And you can't see it. Uh -huh. There you go, sorry. This is the spot. <laughs> this is the spot. You guys are so polite. Uh, this is the spot where uh, the guesses are exactly on. And this is a guess that's way too many. And this is a guess that's way too few. OK. Um, materials need to be uh, put into the containers. Books need to be returned up there. I'm going to write your homework on the board. Mm -hmm.